The world of paint correction and polishing is getting more complicated by the minute. And every week we receive hundreds of questions in comments on social media, on videos and emails. We want to answer those questions. This is Rupa's Replies. One of the most common questions, especially for people who are buying their first Bigfoot polisher is, what do I have to do to maintain it? You know, you're making an investment in quality professional equipment. You want to keep it running, right? Okay, well, there's a few simple things that you can do as the owner that will make sure that your tool lasts and performs as it should until it's ready to come into us for a full service. The number one thing that I see people doing wrong, really, is cord winding. They'll wrap it tight around the body of the tool, stressing this cord relief right here, or putting bends and kinks in this cord. So we sell this actually really handy dandy little cord clip right here, and we want you to keep this cord in nice loose loops. Yes, I get it. It doesn't look cool hanging on the wall this way. I understand. But this is how you're going to preserve that cord. Continually flexing a cord with really tight bends or stretching and pulling at this strain relief weakens the copper inside of the cord. Once it becomes weak, uh, especially when it's got power running through it, it warms up. It can get too thin. It can break inside the insulation and you lose power. Without power, your power tools are not going to run. So definitely be mindful. Take care of your cords. The second thing you're gonna to wanna to do, and this one could actually use it now that I look at it, is you're gonna take a vacuum brush attachment. So your standard upholstery vacuum brush and vacuum out these vents, top, bottom, these two right here. These are the ones that are right around the motor and they get clogged up, it happens. There's fibers from towels, from pads, you got compound dust, you got all kinds of stuff flying around the shop. They get pulled into here, clogs off that airflow, can cause the tool to heat up and maybe not run at optimal performance. So every once in a while, grab just that brush tool, put your vacuum on there, break it up, vacuum that stuff out. The other key is right here on the backing plate. So we lube between the backing plate and this rubber shroud here from the factory. When you get it, there's a small amount of dielectric lubricant there. It just provides a little bit of slip so this moves freely, okay? All you need to do, we recommend about once a month, if you're running a really high production shop, maybe more often, take one small drop of dielectric lubricant or something with a similar viscosity to that, put it on the backing plate on the blue part here, and just twist it around. It'll pull that lubricant underneath the shroud, keep that running right. Um, you also wanna, while you're at it, check and make sure your center bolt's nice and tight. You don't want that coming loose in the middle of a job. So those are really the key things with your random orbital polisher. If you're running a rotary or a Miele, for example, or a 75E that doesn't have a rubber shroud, you don't have to do the lubrication part, but the other parts, the vacuuming of the vents and maintaining your power cord are two key things you can do to keep your Bigfoot polisher running at peak performance and avoid those unexpected breakdowns. So if this video is helpful for you, give us a thumbs up, make sure you subscribe and leave us a comment below. The comments in these videos are how we come up with our next video topic and you never know, we might answer your question on the next episode of Rupa's Replies.